Just another quick update, same day that uh, we just started uh, going out to the garden. Trish and I did a little bit of work on our front yard yesterday, uh, just cutting down the clover a little bit uh, so that we've got some place to go. Um, not totally uh, even, but at least it uh, is looking pretty good. Um, so our bushes that we planted last year, um, this one's got a little bit of growth. You can see the new leaves here, here, some here. This one looks much better. Uh, that one actually was uh, a little damaged. Uh, not too much, but uh, it looked like it, it uh, got a little bit eaten. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape. Uh, I can't remember exactly what this is. Oh, look at that. There's the, an American toad. Kind of hard to see when they're not moving. And our locust tree is starting to bud. Uh, usually take these little leaves off from the, the, the stem of the tree. What they do is sap energy from higher up on the tree. Uh, so hopefully this one will start spreading out significantly this uh, coming year uh, over the growing, growing season. Um, we also have this tree which was totally bent over because it actually got the load of snow and um, some of the gravel. Um, we've taken some of the gravel away but uh, you can see some of it around the bottom of the tree at this point. Um, so it got uh, the snow plow um, decided to try to bury it, uh, but it's survived. Um, so some of the plants, the perennials that we have at the front here are starting to thrive as well. And yes, there are weeds, as there always are. The junipers at the back, and then the iris has just started coming out, but they don't last very long. Um, here's one that's still coming out. Very, very deep purple, and some of the other plants in front. Tulips are almost done. The uh, doubles um, still have some life in them. And then we'll have the other perennials starting to bloom after that. Uh, the rest of the yard, a um, little bit of life on this one too. It seems to be having a little bit of trouble, but there's uh, some leaves down here. And the uh, uh, blue spruce uh, look like they're doing okay. Um, it'll be interesting to see how well they adapt to this environment because this is essentially their second year in here. Um, they look like they're growing. Uh, it's a little wet, bit wet so I'm a little concerned with how much moisture they're going to get in that particular area. Let's see other thing that we have. Oh yeah, the front door. We've got the trees that Trisha bought at Christmas time or uh, in the fall. For Christmas trees and they're too small so we had them inside outside were these sitting outside all, all winter um, and as you can see uh, because of all the buds that are on two of the three trees anyways that they're thriving with no issues whatsoever yeah it looks good and um, here was Sweet William that uh, we actually stored in the garage, um, so it was uh, sort of dormant uh, over the winter time. I brought it out uh, a week ago or so, and as you can see, it has recuperated very nicely. Um, so it's growing by leaps and bounds. So what are you doing over here, Trish? I'm just filling up pots that I'm going to plant flowers in. 
but <clears throat> this was uh, potting soil from the from the planters and then I added some new new triple mix that we got delivered with it and uh, so I'm just gonna take this out so we can uh, use it for anything else out in the garden right now you can go show them the greenhouse maybe or maybe you can get finish this and I'll show the greenhouse yeah. hey there Trisha here want to come see my greenhouse wow. um, <clears throat> A, more like a hotbed, right? What? More like a hotbed. Well, it's a greenhouse. Little greenhouse here. It's about the third year I think I've had this, so it needed some patching up. I did end up putting it together, but <clears throat> some of these things. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. Some of these things need to be planted out like my zucchini look it's got flowers on it and uh, and so on you've got different tomatoes um, we've got four bunches of different tomatoes <clears throat> we've got some squashes some peppers some broccoli red cabbage white cabbage some kale Kale, the kale. Then I planted some more. Um, uh, so I planted some flowers, some marigolds. Um, what was there? What was this one? Rudbeckia. And then I bought some bedding plants at Costco. <clears throat> there is some more pumpkins and squashes coming out. So I've got some planting in the buckets. I was also given these beautiful raspberries that we've got to plant and strawberries. So maybe we'll put that in the in the bucket there and we'll take that over to the to the gardens. Um, at least the strawberry uh, the raspberries. Anyways that's my seedling starts for the garden and then the rest will be planted by seed so hopefully this will be pretty empty well it'll be somewhat empty um, by the end of the this weekend if not we plant it next weekend but we have to uh, we have to get to the um, uh, the chickens out of the hoop house in order to plant all the tomatoes and peppers so they may not go in yet till next week when we can get the chickens out um, the integration of the new chicks is going somewhat well a uh, little bit a little bit slow but um, they're they're making their own they're growing bigger so so we're getting them into the main coop at night and uh, and then they're coming out on their own in the morning so um, so that's that's looking good anyways um, we'll keep you up to date with our progress for today and uh, talk to you later
Okay, it's uh, knockoff time. Um, and uh, I just wanted to give you a State of the Gardens address. Um, even though this is Canada. Uh, anyhow, um, what we've done is put cardboard down in between all of the rows. So those are our walking paths. And then we took the mulch that we had put on in the fall, the straw, and put that over top of the, uh, uh, the cardboard. The idea is to, as much as possible, suppress the weeds in, in the, uh, the rows themselves. Um, so uh, we'll need to do some additional work as well. Um, as you can see, some of these rows actually have quite a bit of uh, weeds in them. Um, they typically are uh, sets of grasses and or dandelions or something along those lines. There are uh, bigger grasses in there too with a very, very heavy um, root structure right at the top. Um, we're collecting as much of that as possible and uh, recycling it by feeding it to the uh, chickens. We also found a number of uh, potatoes um, from last year um, in the in the second bed. So Trisha's got a, all of the potatoes, new potatoes, that were starting to sprout. And there Whoa. they are. Nice meal. <laughs> or two. Or two. Right, and uh, so we found some of those um, in the rows over here. So that was two years ago that we had potatoes in there. Um, they survived two winters, uh, apparently. And then we ended up with a number more potatoes. Um, in this row, and we're leaving these, uh, we'll let them grow and uh, see what happens. Um, so the idea is next time we get in here, hopefully it'll be tomorrow, uh, we can actually do broad forking. So we'll show you how, to, how we do the broad forking of uh, our rows, which are generally in mounds already. And then we'll put uh, cricket manure uh, so that's the stuff that's underneath the blue tarp there. Tarp there. We've had it for a year, and it is well uh, decomposed. Um, and uh, we'll put that on top, and then we'll plant directly into that material. So two more steps before planting. Um, here we can see a little bit of um, some of the strawberries that we've got. So there's one fairly substantial plant there. Uh, here's an asparagus that we planted in between. There's another asparagus down there. Uh, there's a strawberry. There's a strawberry. Um, there's a strawberry. There's a few asparagi. Um, there's another strawberry. There's another asparagus plant. And there's one there too. So because the asparagus are in the second year, we leave them. We don't actually harvest. Well, we had, I think, about three spears or so, uh, so each one of us had uh, the equivalent of a spear or so that we ate uh, fresh, uh, just absolutely gorgeous, wonderful uh, stuff when you're eating fresh asparagus uh, out of the garden. But these ones need to go to seed so that they actually work on uh, developing the root structure underneath the ground so that we'll end up with more that we can start harvesting next year and the years after. Uh, we also have garlic in here. So these are the garlic that we planted last fall. And so they will be coming to scape soon, um, probably in June sometime, maybe early July. And uh, we'll fry those up and use uh, the scapes as well. Um, if you've never had garlic scapes, it's a uh, very similar flavor to garlic, but uh, very mild and uh, they're a very nice uh, addition to a number of um, different kinds of uh, dishes etc. Um, we will be picking up the silage tarp, that one, and the other one over there once they're dry, probably tomorrow or so, and uh, we'll be storing them away. We also have collections of rocks that we've been using to put uh, keep the silage tarps down and uh, those are now in the corners of 
the bed. So you can see another pile of rocks here. There's another pile of rocks there, this side of that uh, dilapidated chair. Um, so we're getting close to having prepared um, garden beds for the coming growing season. Anyways, we will keep you informed as to our progress and uh, we'll update uh, the YouTube channel as soon as we get an opportunity. Maybe I can get it done tonight, editing. Um, anyways, talk to you soon. Alright, uh, this is Roland again. Um, one last update that uh, we haven't informed you about. Uh, so you may notice if you've been paying attention to our um, our vlog YouTube channel that something has changed on the house and uh, over the last two weeks two and a half weeks we've had a uh, deck builder uh, putting the deck up on top of the garage and it is now complete um, so you can see the the kind of structure that we've got it's floating so it's not tied to the uh, to the house at all um, but it's uh, very very sturdy uh, structure. Uh, I'll give you a detailed uh, glimpse at it um, in uh, a couple of minutes and I'll go up there and uh, show it off to you. Uh, but we're very very happy. It gives us uh, on the top floor anyways about double the space that we had before uh, so we can go outside. We are looking for a uh, retractable patio umbrella that we can put up there uh, along with uh, a bunch of patio um, furniture etc some of which we already have and uh, we'll bring it up there uh, when we have another body or two that can help us uh, lift it um, anyway so I'll give you an update as to exactly what that uh, um, deck looks like okay as promised here's a detailed view of the deck so we walk directly out of the patio onto the deck surface itself. It's right underneath the uh, lip of the actual door itself. And then you'll see that the railing is built into the deck structure. So there's actually a box around the bottom of it. And then there's a big carriage bolt that actually goes, actually it's a carriage screw, I think. It goes directly through uh, the post itself. Um, our deck builder routered the uh, edges in so allows for this is a 16 foot cattle panel that he's broken up into smaller portions and uh, about four feet in, in width or so. Uh, you'll see that they're tacked to the bottom with U uh, nails um, but otherwise they are actually secured in with wood on three sides. And that goes all the way around, 2 by 6 on top. This is all pressure treated um, with uh, triple screws for every, every uh, connection with the deck uh, underneath the deck structure. And uh, you can see the corners are 45s. And uh, it's uh, overhanging the roof by just a little bit. So what we're hoping to do is to be able to, and here you can see the heads of the screws that go directly through the actual posts themselves. It's a fairly sturdy structure. Anyways, what we're hoping to do is right underneath that lip, the metal lip that you're seeing there, uh, we're hoping to actually put um, a uh, eaves trough so that we can collect the water, the rainwater, into that uh, ICP tote uh, there and uh, it'll be up on a couple of uh, cinder blocks so that we can get a little bit of gravity feed and feed it to feed the water to uh, trees that are over there um, you can see some of the bushes uh, that we've got so those are three elderberries the uh, uh, the sticks that you're seeing uh, uh, rising up uh, in behind there are some uh, blueberry uh, there's a blueberry patch with about four uh, bushes or so. We hope to actually move those over so that they're going to be in the back, uh, backyard uh, over here by the uh, fruit trees a little bit more. Um, these are nanny berries that are over here, two of them. 
the space in between is going to be our pathway to the other side. I hope later on in the summer, if we've got uh, the resources and the time to be able to do it, I hope to actually build a bridge over four piles uh, across the, uh, the wet area. Um, and uh, that will become our alternative to actually going all the way around through uh, the driveway and uh, to, to the garden. So a much shorter pathway uh, to actually move. Um, I've moved uh, my um, hibiscus plants. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, that little one uh, in the corner um, in the blue pot is actually Rachel's. And then she's got, Rachel's got another uh, little hibiscus uh, that's down there on her steps. Um, that's her tiny house. Um, I don't know how often that we've actually shown it since we had it installed last fall. Uh, but she is living in there full time and uh, she hopes to build a uh, deck out the front um, so that uh, she'll be adding to her living space out there as well. Um, we're going to be doing uh, some work on the space that you see between the four um, posts uh, in the back there. Uh, that's where the septic bed is. Um, and you can see the tops of the septic tank. Uh, there's two um, uh, concrete lids there that uh, give us access to the tanks uh, when we need to empty them. Um, we're going on two years this summer and uh, I don't think that we actually have to uh, empty them yet, uh, maybe another year. Uh, we'll see where we go from here. Um, we've only got two people living in here right now. Um, and then there's some fruit trees, etc. that we've got back there. Um, the stairway, we had uh, the same person who did the deck uh, do the stairway last fall. Uh, so we've been using it, or at least um, that guy over there uh, has been using it quite a bit. Uh, to get upstairs, uh, particularly when he's uh, after his walk and he's had a bit of a, a rest, he comes up uh, to ask for a treat, um, uh, dentistic, etc., uh, that we have in the morning. And uh, he comes up to the, uh, the screen door to, to make that request, or at least that's our interpretation of why he's up there. And uh, as I said earlier, we'll be moving uh, more furniture up here, etc. So it'll become a little bit more of a, an oasis for us to um, be outside and uh, be high and dry and be able to see what's going on around. And uh, Trisha's already taken advantage of uh, the time um, by having some rest and uh, a beverage. Um, Anything more that uh, you want to say about the deck at this point? No, it's just that we have a lot of room and I think we can enjoy it up here. But we do need shade, so we're looking into getting um, a big umbrella that we can use at different parts wherever we are, kind of thing. Retractable, right. And maybe eventually get another, uh, like a per pergola um, that has netting so we can sit outside more at night without mosquitoes. And. Uh, yeah, so we'll make this a nice outdoor living space here. Yeah. The barbecue's gonna come up here, so we can yeah barbecue right out right outside the main living area and uh, and hopefully I uh, yeah I've got to look for a, a dining table out here. I think we have enough chairs, but just need a table. So. Well, some of those chairs need to be recovered as well. We got to figure uh -huh. out a way of. Recovering well, the I'm, two that are out there in the I'm garden. I'm thinking of the folding ones that we have, the oh. big ones. We've got six of those. Yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. So, in terms of space, um, if, if you're looking for uh, dimensions of the deck, um, essentially the garage is about 26 by 26. That's internal dimensions, I think. Um, the external dimensions, because we've got ICF around the garage and in the entire house. That makes it uh, the space even bigger, um, but I, I I think that's what Kevin was working off of. So the guy who was actually doing our deck, um, it's about 26 by 26, and then a little extension here in front of our uh, bedroom uh, door, sliding sliding door. Um, that's about another three feet or so. So that's this section here. Um, 
anyway, so it's uh, it looks like looking like it's going to give us lots and lots and lots of pleasure to be able to actually be out here and uh, uh, yeah, enjoy the space. All right, that's enough for uh, as an update, and I'm going to have a beverage and relax um, and try to cool down a little bit. Uh, I'm a little on the warm side. Talk to you soon. Thank you.